Today on CTV News at 5, a sentence date is set for a Lethbridge man who pleaded guilty to beating a man to death with a 2 by 4 Plus, Southern Alberta is a hot place for jobs this spring. And Lethbridge College's CEO steps down after seven years at the helm. You're watching CTV News. Good afternoon, I'm Alicia Fieldberg. A Lethbridge man who pleaded guilty to manslaughter last year will be sentenced in June. Police found the body of 47-year-old Christopher James Ballandine in a North Lethbridge home last October. Officers say he had been beaten to death with a 2x4. 52-year-old Terry Bissonette pleaded guilty to manslaughter in November. The co-accused, Carrie Zeller, was originally charged with second-degree murder but pleaded guilty to the lesser charge. Court heard Bissonette and Zeller went to confront Ballandine over allegations he was physically abusing his common-law wife. Bissonette says they broke in and Zeller attacked him while he was passed out on a couch. The Crown is asking for a six, six to seven year sentence while the defence wants four. The judge has reserved his decision until June 15th. Today, Bissonette spoke in court saying he'd like to apologize to the victim's family and that he's very sorry for what happened. Zeller is currently serving an eight year sentence for his role in Ballantyne's death. A 29-year-old man will serve time in jail for possessing a loaded prohibited weapon. Chase Leland Hare pleaded guilty to, to the charge in Lethbridge Provincial Court. On January 12th, regional police went to Hare's home with a search warrant. He admitted to officers he had a loaded sawed-off shotgun in his possession, despite the fact a previous con conviction prohibited him from having a firearm. He's been sentenced to four years in prison. A former Tabor man facing decade-old charges of sexual assault and sexual interference made his first court appearance this afternoon. Police say the alleged crimes happened between 1995 and 2001 and involved two victims between the ages of 10 and 16. In February, 50-year-old Jordan Van Boerthuizen was arrested in Greece. After an extradition hearing, he's now on his way back to Canada. The man lived in Tabor for a number of years and residents say he worked at a local hardware store. Police say Van Voorthuizen was known to the victims. His case was set over until April 13th. A local Liberal candidate is raising concerns about NDP campaign literature being distributed in, in Lethbridge West constituency. The flyers are being sent out by NDP candidate Shannon Phillips. They include a graph that focuses on NDP gains made in the 2011 federal election. The Liberal Balbura says the graph contains vote results from different years and in both federal and provincial elections. Bora calls the mix and match chart tacky and says it skirts very close to the borderline of honesty. Phillips says she stands by the material. It's obviously there's a misrepresentation to excite people that, oh, NDP is just rising, they have a bubble and uh, there's no bubble there. I've been door knocking since October and I, I know exactly how much support they have. I know how much support I have. There's nothing false in those figures. We are looking at a very recent snapshot of what uh, voters in Lethbridge West did, not what they did four years ago. We are looking forward. We are building on the momentum of the Alberta NDP in this, in this riding and across Alberta. Bura says the figures are misleading because federal Liberals' vote, level, vote levels are always much lower than the provincial totals. In the 2008 provincial election, Bura came second, less than 1,000 votes behind his PC opponent. The NDP candidate finished third. The latest jobless figures show Southern Alberta was one of the few regions in Alberta where the unemployment rate has gone down over the past month. The unemployment rate was 4.6% in March. That's a small drop from 4.9% in February. It's also down more than 1% from last year's unemployment rate. The figures also show the job picture in the Lethbridge Medicine Hat region is much better than the Canadian average. Nationally, the unemployment rate stands at just over 7%. Economic Development Lethbridge says the mild winter means agriculture, trades and construction industries are hiring earlier than usual. We were actually one of only a few regions in Alberta that did see employment rates increase, meaning that we've in, we're in a stronger position than we were last month. I think Banff and Canmore were the only other two that saw an increase. And so I think that it's just a demonstration of the level of activity. The early spring here has started construction, agriculture and manufacturing uh, ramp up a bit. So we're starting to see some of the impact of that. And Edmonton has the highest monthly jobless rate in Alberta at 5.6%.
And Dory's in with weather to talk about another hit of winter weather that's coming, unfortunately, Dory. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be really bad, Alicia, but we are certainly going to be seeing some flurries, some showers in the mix. It won't be here long. It's just half a day event tomorrow, and then the rest of the weekend looks really good. Everyone will be able to find the eggs on Sunday, I promise. So I'll have more details for you coming up in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Dory. The president and CEO of Lethbridge College has resigned. After seven years, Dr. Tracy Edwards has decided to step aside, saying the time was right for a change. This morning, she met with members of the local media, including Daryl Rummeld. Holding back her emotions, Dr. Tracy Edwards officially announced her decision to resign as president and CEO of Lethbridge College on Thursday. Um, it wasn't an easy decision, but uh, I think the timing is right, both for me and for the college. Edwards' tenure comes to an end nearly seven years to the day it began at Lethbridge College on July 1st of 2005. For Edwards, it was a chance to return to Canada after serving as Vice President of Academic Affairs at Valencia Community College in Orlando, Florida. I think you will agree there's been a great transformation in this institution in the last six or seven years, and it's because of our faculty and staff. Under her direction, the college took on a new mission statement, new logo, and most noticeably, a new name, in the hopes it would attract more students to the college. And it did. More, in fact, than ever before. It's just been really an amazing journey. In her resignation announcement to employees, Edwards said she was struck by the college's strong community roots when she first arrived, its sense of pride and history. Her desire was to continue that, and it'd be hard to argue that she didn't. In her time as college president and CEO, she was recognized numerous times as a YWCA woman of distinction in the community commitment category, presented a key to the city, and given a Blackfoot name, meaning first offering. And now the time has come to say goodbye. Uh, it's the right time in this institution's history. We're planned out to 2014 now. Uh, we have a strong board and we have a strong uh, compu uh, number of community partners who have been working with us. And uh, bringing a new leader in now will give that person time to get adjusted so when the planning starts for 2015 to 2020, uh, that person will be ready. Edwards says she has no doubt the college will continue to thrive under new leadership as both her and the college get set for their next step, their new reality. Daryl Rummelt, CTV News, Lethbridge. And Dr. Edwards will remain in her current role as president and CEO until June 30th. While many people take time off for Easter, city services will take a break as well. City Hall and the Animal Shelter will be closed tomorrow and Monday. Transit will not run Friday and Sunday, but will resume Saturday and Monday. The landfill will be closed tomorrow, so anyone who normally has their trash picked up on Fridays will have their garbage removed Saturday. Also, if you're heading out on the long weekend, remember there are fire, fire bans in place for several Alberta parks, including Little Bull, Park Lake, and Lake McGregor. Lethbridge lawyers are donating their time to give free legal advice to those who can't afford their services. They're hosting the Legal Grounds Advice Clinic on Saturday, April 28th from 10 in the morning until 1 that afternoon. Those who can't afford legal representation will have the opportunity to meet with a lawyer for, over ha for half an hour and discuss any legal issue for free. The one-day clinic will be at the courthouse and is part of Law Day in Lethbridge. I did start uh, calling around to see, you know, who am I going to get to volunteer of our lawyers here in Lethbridge. And first call I made, the law firm stepped up and said, hey, we'll help. So it's been really, really good. So we're going to give it a try and hopefully we can help some of the people that basically don't qualify for our service that just have some legal questions they need answered. Now space is limited and appointments must be pre-booked. To contact Lethbridge Legal Guidance, call 403-380-6338. How's this for school spirit? Students at Gilbert Patterson Middle School are celebrating a new mascot bought and paid for by the students themselves. We are, we are tigers. Snag the Tiger made a triumphant return today. It's been more than two decades since the Gilbert Patterson Tigers have had a mascot. The 600 students raised over $20,000 for the mascot who will now walk the sidelines at all home games. Well, it's been years since we've had a mascot, and through our fundraiser this year, the kids decided that we actually needed a mascot to participate in our events throughout the school year. So they fundraised really hard, and we achieved the amount, and today is the grand unveiling. I was really excited to see Snake today. 
It was really fun to get to raise all that money and we made $20,000. Snag is the updated version of the, of the last tiger mascot the school had two decades ago. Now let's take a look at the markets.